What have I been watching? So this is a series I'm gonna do on the second channel just when I feel like it because sometimes I watch things and I don't know if I can record, record a review for it or if I want to. So I can just put them in this video, say here, I watched this, here are my quick thoughts on it because I can't really go in depth in a review for it. Um, so I got a couple movies here. Uh, I got the Happy Days to talk about here, all six seasons. So I got these things to talk about. Uh, so yes, yeah, cool. I'm watching through Great Muppet Caper currently on Disney Plus, and then you know I got I'll watch Muppets Most Wanted. I'll probably do a review for this one, um, probably tomorrow. Uh, I don't know because I don't know for sure I'm doing that though. I haven't been feeling the greatest. I think I'm actually sick. Uh, with what I don't know, we'll see. Um, so yeah, I, I'm hoping it's not that long because I'm supposed to dog sit. So. And it, even if I'm sick, I'll still dog sit. But, yeah. So, I was wrong about the title of this movie. It's not Hawaii Nights. It's Havana Nights. Uh, Dirty Dancing Havana, ha Havana Nights. I think that's how you say it. Here. If it will focus, focus. Down here. There's the title. You can see it. Um, this movie's not very good. It's just a less good version of Dirty Dancing. Like, this doesn't act like it's a sequel. It just does everything Dirty Dancing did without the soundtrack. And and just the cast here isn't as good as the first one. And what made the first Dirty Dancing really popular was the soundtrack. The soundtrack is incredible. And that's what makes the movie so enjoyable. This movie's okay. But just without that soundtrack, why watch this movie? I really don't recommend it and you know this movie I think was a direct-to-video movie that came out like 2004 um, and I think this is a Walmart exclusive blu-ray two-pack of the movie so if you can get it like this I definitely recommend it just if you want to own both of them I think it was like seven bucks at Walmart my Walmart had this for a really really long time then my dad picked this up for me and thank you dad for doing that because I really do enjoy having these movies uh, I only really like Dirty Dancing though but it you know when uh, you're a collector like me, you just like, I don't want to own Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but I do because of the completion of it, in it, completionist in me says, yeah, you got to have them all. And I like having them all. So, and you know, when I re do want to revisit all the movies, I want to revisit all the movies. So, you know, I'll do that. Um, but, you know, for, the, for this type of stuff, I won't be revisiting this movie again. It was very boring. <laughs> and I think it actually might be longer than the first one. I'm going to just say the runtime on this one is. It doesn't say the runtime. This one here, though. I know, they're about the same. Wow, they're the same exact length. 105 minutes, 105 minutes. Which just shows they were, re they were really trying to ape the first dirty dancing. And it just. Excuse me, my throat. It's just kind of going out of whack there. Uh, that's why I'm saying it don't know right now what I'm going to be doing because I am not feeling the greatest. Uh, I watched the Muppet movie. Um, this movie is fantastic. Um, so quick story of how like I got into the Muppets. I watched them all the time. My grandparents, uh, they showed me them. and I, I really loved the, the Muppets when I grew up. And um, this was, this was never my favorite. Um, I had like a whole bunch of DVDs. I found this for six bucks at Best Buy. This, but you know, I I've grown to appreciate it more. It's the thing that started it. It's really a fantastic movie. And um, <coughs> here, I got some water here. Let me drink some water while I'm doing this. There we go. Clear the throat a bit, you know. But, you know, I, I'm going to like it more. It, it is a really fantastic movie. It has one of my best cameo, favorite cameos of all of the series, which is Steve Martin. Uh, Steve Martin is a hilarious actor, and he comes in this movie and has a hilarious cameo in this movie. All the celebrity cameos, for the most part, in this movie are really funny. Though I can tell that there are some I get, which has always happened with the Muppets. There's, no, there's always been celebrity cameos where I'm like, what? 
<laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but there are other ones that I find really funny. So that's, I think that's why the Muppets have lasted for so long. You know, I never remembered Alice Cooper being in the Muppet Show or Elton John, but I could tell like my grandparents and other people knew who they were and they were really happy to see those people that they knew back then. And, now, and you know, now as a, now that I'm older, I can see, oh, it's this person I recognize. And, you know, and it, that's why they've endured for so long. Um, also, they're just really fantastic characters, and the puppetry is amazing. And the music in this movie is some of the best of any Muppet movie ever. Um, by the way, this came without a slip at Best Buy. Not too happy about that, but whatever. And I think um, it's a really beautiful um, movie. You know, that scene where they're all standing around the campfire, feeling like Kermit's feeling like he has to give up. Jim Henson actually played that at his, they actually played at Jim Henson's funeral, which just shows how beautiful and how much these characters mean to him that this was, that was the song he chose for them to play at his funeral. Um, this is, his, this is definitely the best Muppet movie, I would say. Um, I can't really think of any flaws with this one. Uh, just... I mean, the ending's a little out there and a little goofy, but for me, I really love that ending, and I always look forward to that ending, so I, I can't really consider it a flaw personally, but maybe some people might find it a little too goofy, but come on. It was already pretty goofy. The Muppets were already pretty goofy. I love how the poster was also inspired by, like, Gone with the Winds, which is pretty awesome. And, yeah, I did get to see this on the big screen, and it was funny. I went with my grandparents, uh, my, my other grandparents, not the ones who showed me the Muppets, and they say, why'd you take us to that movie? It was just a bunch of people we used to know that are dead. <laughs> the celebrities, because they're, cause they're in the, like their 70s. So they thought, I thought that was pretty funny. But they were just laughing. They were laughing about them saying that. They said that as a joke, but it was funny. Um, but it was a really nice experience watching that on the big screen. And I, I had a great time, you know, and... I, there wasn't it wasn't a packed of a theater as I thought it was gonna be, but it's it shows that there you know still is love for these characters. I'm really excited to watch the new Muppet series launch on Disney Plus uh, this uh, July 31st. So we'll see. All right, let's talk about the Happy Days. I really don't have too much to say about it. I really say though, I would say after about season three, I just stopped caring. I, I was watching it, but I just. I was watching it with like headphones on, listening to something else because it just got boring. And like I was still paying attention. I was still like, yeah, okay, I'm still watching. I'm still here for the ride. But it just got such a Fonzie centric focus. And I lost the point of what Fonzie is. He's a greaser, you know. He he doesn't do school. He isn't a he isn't like the best guy. Yeah, but then they're like, but now it's like, well, he's the popular character, so he's the nice guy who's always there for his buddies and it, and it felt like it just lost the point of what Fonzie was why he was so great of a character I mean you know obviously Fonzie was always a little bit of that but he also wasn't if that makes sense it's kind of like I don't know and they kept going with Fonzie and all the two-parters and the exciting episodes they did just weren't funny they were boring episodes and then you they, they the sister was it Jonesy um was, was the one of the worst characters in the show and they kept giving her more spotlight episodes and stuff like that and then this just went on they're going into college and things like that and it's just like I don't really feel like the show is got the point anymore and I, I guarantee the other seasons got worse because of that too and so yeah I just I didn't I, I and even then the show wasn't that great of a show because it's just really of its time. Um, you know, it's weird that the uh, weird to say that, right? I watched this show in 2020 that was made in the 70s and set in the 50s. And um, it, it's just very of its time, though. Like, there are very stupid episodes that just... Yeah, I can't buy, um, like, this episode. Richie goes to a party, a sailor's party for his... Um, I, it was like a bachelor's party, I think. I can't remember exactly. And, you know, his dad was helping him through uh, some, you know, he did some out, uh, some alcohol and stuff. And he just, it kind of, he was kind of out, out. And so he's like, he's helping him through it. And then, you know, Richie looks at his dad and he goes, Dad, 
am I in trouble for this? He goes, no, Richie, I think you've learned your lesson. And it's like, bull crap. That's not how it works. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, that's not how it works in real life. So I always find it funny, you know, I've had older people tell me that they like the way, like, TV used to be, where it used to be so wholesome, like shows like Full House and crap. And I, I just can't stand shows like that, you know? Because what you're really doing is you're showing, you know, these shows, yeah, a family could watch it, but like little kids are gonna watch that and think that the world is some clean, happy place where everything's okay and everything wraps up pretty easily. And when you, but when you really look at it, that's not how the world is. It's a pretty messed up place. I'm not saying like you gotta have to show all the horrors of the world or something, but I'm saying like you can't just like sugarcoat things like, there are things that don't wrap up within 20 minutes or so. And, you know, that I get that's the fun of sitcoms. But I think nowadays with sitcoms, we've kind of transitioned out of that type of formula because it's just dumb. It's a dumb way of making shows. It doesn't hold up after time. And, you know, so I just... It's a good show for, like, entertainment value, but not really. It's fun, though. The soundtrack and all the older songs from the 50s, I recognize. I love them. I love the theme song. I listen to those songs outside of the show. Um, you know, I, I it, there's so much iconography from the show. If they ever made, like, uh, fun, uh, uh, Happy Days Pops, I would get the Fonzie Pop. I always reference the Fonz. Um, you know, my friend... Parker, we always, I always reference the Fonz, and he's like, who the hell is the Fonz? Why do you keep referencing him? I'm like, from the happy days. And he's like, I'm not, that show sounds gay. <laughs> you know, so he doesn't want to watch it. I don't blame him, because he wouldn't like the show anyways. Um, but, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going on a rant now. But, uh, the show is fun. I, I, you know, I enjoy it. Um, there were moments I really laughed and some jokes I really laughed at. It's kind of cool that Ron Howard kind of got his start from the show. You know, he went on to making uh, Best Picture winners like A Beautiful Mind. Um, and, so, and, you know, being a really good actor. He had a cameo in The Simpsons that I thought was really funny. Things like that. You know, Ron Howard, love that guy. So... I respect this show, and I wish uh, last year I'd seen The Happy Days, because I didn't even know what it was, because one of the actors was at Bakersfield Comic Con, and I would have gotten him to sign this set, because I would have gone and gotten him to sign it, but nah, that didn't happen. That's unfortunate. But, you know, I, whatever. But I'm surprised they actually haven't made Pops out of The Happy Days, Funko Pops. I think that'd be really cool. Um, I might even get Richie, because I love Ron Howard so much. Maybe even Potsy. Because you never go wrong with Potsy. I'm a little Potsy. So, hey! Like, share, and subscribe! But yeah, I, I highly recommend uh, the Muppet movie if you love the Muppets and you haven't seen it. Um, I also, and I don't re recommend any other things I mentioned in this list. Um, if you love the happy days, comment down your favorite episode. I don't necessarily have a favorite episode. Um, I don't really love the show, so I can't really say I have one. Comment your favorite Muppet movie. Comment your favorite movie soundtrack. Uh, my favorite movie soundtrack. Hmm. <sighs> it's a hard one. I'm going to say Footloose. I'm going to say for the loose. Actually, you know what? Change that. Shrek 2. Shrek 2 is my answer. My final answer.